hi everyone if you're coming back from my last video welcome back and if you're new hello my name is jay and this is a short series talking about aave african american vernacular english and i suggest that you watch my last video which talks about what is aave and how did it develop but today's video is going to talk about language variation with aave AAVE can vary throughout many different ways. It can be through region, social class, age, gender, and I'll even mention Black ASL towards the end of the video. But when it comes to language variation with AAVE, everything can be factored in, and I'll talk about more examples in the rest of the video. Regional differentiation is one of the primitive factors in dialect differences and a natural starting point in the examination of language variation. Sonia Lanehart. Within the African American community, people are able to pinpoint the difference in AAVE when they talk to other people, like region differences. Like if you're one person is talking to the other and they hear a word that they never heard before or they hear a difference in the word that they pronounce, they can probably pinpoint where the person came from. Like if they were talking to someone from New York and they noticed that they used a word that they don't hear or that a word sounded different when they said it, like they stretched out a certain sound in the word or anything like that. But this doesn't just go for the African-American community. Anybody can pick up on these things. It's natural for us to figure out these things and put the pieces together. But the area that a person comes from matters because it influences our language, either if we grow up around it or if we spend time around a language or a dialect, we just so happen to pick up on it. AAVE varies through social class, just like standard English. And higher class communities actually use more standard English norms compared to the middle class communities because they are considered the middle ground and they can either go towards AAVE norms or steer away from it. But there's also sub factors that play into the middle class communities, like their proximity to the working class, how insulated their communities are, and orientation to and pressures from external factors. Overall, social class is a very complex variation when it comes to AAVE, and it has many intersections with other factors that can switch up its language use. Gender plays a big role in variation when it comes to AAVE. In 1983, Patricia Nichols did a study to examine AAVE in South Carolina and Georgia, and she discovered that women who were working as secretaries or teachers or other pink collar jobs were using more features of mainstream English compared to the men who were working in jobs with construction or carpentry type industries where their interactions were more limited or they were able to speak more freely in their job. And yes, things have changed since 1983, but this is just to show that depending on your job, it influences your language use. But and overall, it shows that women are more likely to use English norms compared to their male counterparts. AAVE also varies with age. Elders and adults may use different features compared to what teenagers and kids may use. And teenagers have different influences compared to what the elders and adults may have had back then. Like now, their influences may be the kids at school or their workplace if they're able to work, um, the slang that is now trendy, or even social media. In 1969, Walt Wolfram did a study and discovered that middle class teenagers demonstrated more variation than the adults. Wolfram also discovered that adults in the working class had a fair share of AAVE features and standard English norms, but compared to the working class teenagers, they were more consistent with their use of AAVE. The younger speakers had an increase in AAVE, but a reduction in their regional variation, 
while the older speakers exhibited local dialect structures. This shows that age plays a role in the variation of AAVE, but it can also intersect with social class. Style shifting is defined as variation within the speech of a single speaker, whereby speakers may shift in their use of grammatical, phonological, and lexical variants in response to social conditions. Linguists often reserve code switching for switching between different languages rather than variable features associated with social factors such as gender or speech context. When an individual style shifts, the variations could provide social meaning to the listeners that portray aspects of the speaker's identity or status in society. Most of the time, style shifting is resulted as a response to the context of speech or constructing one's identity. And as a reminder, style shifting can be present anywhere, at work, in the classrooms, or even at home. Black ASL is a dialect of American Sign Language. It used to be called Black Sign Variation, but some of the factors that we have discussed also applies to Black ASL. Black ASL was developed by Black Deaf people in the 18 and 1900s during segregation, and it just became an entire separate variety from ASL. To show you some of the differences between Black ASL and ASL, I'm going to use clips of Nakia Smith or It's Charmé to show the differences between the two. As you can see in the clips, the signs are completely different, showing the variety between the two. But later in the video, Nakia Smith also brings up phrases as well. She specifically shows an example of, you're in my business, don't do that in ASL. But in black ASL, they would say, stop being nosy, mind your business. And there was a drastic difference with uh, visible facial features and also more body gesturing along with the signing. The other difference in black ASL and ASL is how much space is being used when they sign. Black ASL is more likely to use two hands while ASL is more likely to use one. And then there's also the frequency of how much they mouth their words as they're signing. It was found in a study that older black deaf people did not mouth as they signed compared to the younger black deaf people where they frequently mouth their words as they signed. This is probably due to the influence of vernacular English and also schools or mainstream areas that's influencing their signing. But overall, older and younger black signers differ in how they incorporate AAVE with younger signers using more features of AAVE in vernacular form. If you would like to learn more about this, I'll link Nakia Smith's video in the description and I'll also link articles talking about the variation of AAVE and more on Black ASL. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and share the video as well. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I'm happy to answer. Thank you again for watching my video. Have a good day or night. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.